Let's look over the parathyroid. So first of all, the location, we earlier talked about how it's on the back of the thyroid gland. So it's not on the back of the isthmus, it's on the back of the lobes of the thyroid. And then I'm using the word back, but sometimes on the exam, you'll see the words posterior and dorsum. There are four main glands, two on the left and two on the right. The blood supply is pretty easy to remember because it's the same as the thyroid. Now we've been categorizing the parathyroid glands as two on the right and two on the left, but now we're gonna stop categorizing them that way and we're gonna categorize them as the two on the top and the two on the bottom. And so the two on the top are gonna be supplied by the superior thyroid artery. And remember that's the first branch off of the external carotid artery. And then the two inferior parathyroid glands are going to be supplied by the inferior thyroid artery, which is a branch off of the thyrocervical trunk. Now we're going to move on to the embryological development, and we'll see that here this is actually backwards, and it doesn't make as much sense as the blood supply does. So the two superior are going to be from the fourth pharyngeal pouch, and then the two inferior are going to be from the third pharyngeal pouch. So the way I'm remembering this is based off of the words superior and inferior. And so the superior one is hungry. It needs four pouches of food. And then inferior is less. The word literally means less. And so we're going to need less pouches of food. We're only going to need three. And so in this case, two inferior parathyroid glands are going to be embryologically developed from the third pharyngeal pouch. Let's look at the function of this gland. A lot of very confusing questions actually come from the function of the parathyroid gland. The job here is to secrete parathyroid hormone in response to low blood calcium. So you have to be really careful here because remember the thyroid gland, uh, the C cells secrete calcitonin, which will tone down or lower the blood calcium if it's too high. So they can really be tricky on the use of the high and the low blood calcium. So which organ will secrete an important hormone in response to low blood calcium? And so even though calcitonin will result in low blood calcium, don't pick the thyroid gland. It's going to be the parathyroid gland. So calcitonin, remember, it tones down blood calcium. It does not get secreted in response to low blood calcium. And so it gets secreted in response to high blood calcium so that it can tone down high blood calcium. So calcitonin on the thyroid, on the front, it's going to tone down blood calcium. So if we have too high of a blood calcium, calcitonin will get secreted. And then on the back where the parathyroid gland is, it will secrete PTH in response to low blood calcium to turn it up. So the parathyroid hormone is going to be released in response to low blood calcium, which will result in raising the blood calcium. It's opposed by calcitonin in the C cells, which is going to tone down high blood calcium. It's essential for life, and a deficiency will result in you maintaining that low blood calcium, which can result in something called tetany. And just a note here, don't confuse TSH with PTH. They have similar letters in there, and I find some people will get confused by that. On the exam, they'll try to kind of confuse you with that. So don't confuse PTH with TSH. And remember, thyroid stimulating hormone is a component of colloid. And remember, TSH is going to tell those follicular cells in the thyroid to reach into the colloid and grab thyroglobulin and convert it into T4 and then T3. And I didn't mention this in the thyroid lecture, but for the most part, we will always first manufacture T4. And then if we need T3, we just chop off an iodine and then we have T3. For the histology, there's two main cells. There's the principal or chief cells, and then there's the oxyphil cells. So the principal cells or the chief cells are going to be the ones that are secreting parathyroid hormone. And if you look here, they're the ones that are deep and dark purple. So you've probably seen chief cells come up a couple times. They are in the stomach as gastric chief cells, which secrete pepsinogen and chymotrypsin. And then there's chief cells in the carotid body also. But usually these questions will distinguish based on location and like give you a hint about which type of chief cell they're talking about. And then we have the oxyphil cells, and those are acidophilic or acid staining. They contain granules, and their function is unknown. And so I've seen them literally test on the function of oxyphil cells, and you just have to know that the function is unknown. And so the way I remember this is I think of a guy named Phil. He's got an ox, and when people ask him why he has an ox, he's just like, uh, I don't know. I don't know why I have an ox. 
And so oxyfill cells, they have an unknown function. All right, so we're at the fact card or the flash card. Make sure that you can go through this and understand all these little bullet points. And then I do have some questions for you to answer on the next couple slides. Thanks for sticking with me through the video, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Let me know what your main takeaway was by commenting down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. And if you found any value in this video, I know that my full course would be way more valuable to you please consider clicking the link on the bottom right and subscribing to my full course.